This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be uh, kind of clarifying and optimizing a couple things in the save system that we created last week. So the first thing I want to do is that where we had our original player prep save system, we'd kind of tied our play session manager and our save manager together, and that was working okay then. But now that this is a little bit more of a final system, I want to make sure they're modularized and so that if, say, we ever were to change our play session manager, we wouldn't have to then go into our save manager and make changes there as well. So in order to do this, we're just going to simply make it so that instead of these being hard-coded to pass in and take you know, these values from each other, I want to set up these methods so that they either take in a parameter or, or return a value so that any outside class could use them. In theory, we would be able to then take the save manager, pull it out of this game, put it into another game, and it would work just as well because it's no longer going to be reliant on the elements of this game. So in order to do that, there's just a couple of quick changes we need to make in here. The first one is inside of our save game data. And in here, we need to pass in a parameter of what will eventually be this furthest level that we've reached. So we're going to pass in an integer called furthest level. And then all we need to do in here is to say that when we serialize, instead of pulling from this outside class, we'll just serialize that um, parameter that we passed in for this level. Likewise, for loading the game data, here, instead of hard coding to that um, variable in Play Session Manager that we're going to you know, hard code this, um, this value into it, instead what we can do is we can simply return that. And so we can have Play Session Manager call this um, method and get that value from it. So here we're going to set the return value instead of void it's going to be uh, it's going to return an integer now and we do have to do a little bit of we have to create one new um, variable here because we have to say integer and we'll call, just call this fl for furthest level. Um, we'll deserialize that we can close the file and then once we've made sure that we've closed the file after all this then we can return fl. So now when we call this we'll get that back Likewise here, if there isn't um, any data, instead of setting that particular variable, we'll just return zero. Now the only thing we have to do is jump back to Play System Manager, which calls these two um, methods, so that we can actually change how they are called. So we might see, okay, here's the first one we have, load game data. And here, um, instead of simply loading the game data and, and not doing anything with that information, we're going to say that our furthest level integer further, furthest level equals the result of calling load game data. And then the second one, in an easy way, if you're ever not sure exactly where a method's being called, simply right click on it and go find references. We'll see down here, we only have one reference um, outside of itself. There's, you'll always get the you know, where you actually declare the method. Uh, but then we see here that it appears, so I'm going to double click on that and it'll jump you right to the line where that occurs. And so here now, instead of simply passing nothing in this parameter, I need to make sure that I pass for this level in. And so just like that now, we no longer have any references to our play session manager inside of here. They all simply, um, it's all simply handled by the play session manager, which is simply aware of this save manager, which is kind of like a service provider for it. So modularizing our save system gives us a lot more flexibility, but real flexibility will come when we're able to save something other than just an integer. And I got a lot of questions about this after the last video, so I definitely wanted to touch on it to show how you can use the save system to save just a, a lot of data rather than simply one piece of information, because obviously right now just saving one integer isn't a lot better than player prefs. But where the real power of saving binary files is, is that you can convert pretty much any class that you can make in Unity into a save file. And here's how we go about doing that. The first thing we need to do is create some sort of class that can be saved. We're going to do this down in the same save manager file. We can create a separate class down here. Um, so we're going to call this public class save data. And it's not going to be static and it's not going to be a mono behavior. But it's going to have a few public variables inside of it. We'll have a public integer called furthest level. So right now, this is basically storing the same information that we have right now. But let's say we had some additional information as well. Maybe we had a public float called best time that we can store the best time of our level. We could even make this if we really wanted to, like a, an array of times, um, something like that. It, really, anything that you can store, um, any data you can store, pretty much you can put into here. There are a few exceptions to that, namely um, 
Unity's own um, structs, things like vector threes and colors in Unity aren't actually serializable, so if you try to store those, you will get an error. You'll need to kind of store those in your own custom version of them that you've marked as serializable. Um, but like I say, for most basic things like ints, floats, strings, things like that, you can absolutely do. And you can generate your own vector threes. They're just a group of three floats, so you can make that work. Uh, but we could also say we have a string in here, say public string player name, anything we want. Now there's two other things I want to add to this. One is a constructor so that we can go from say outside in our play session manager and make one of these save data classes that we can then turn into a file. So I'm going to say public save data. This is going to pass in an integer called this level, a float called best time, and a string called player name. And these are these don't obviously have to be the exact same names. This is purely arbitrary. It just becomes kind of easier to know what, what's going to be saved into what. Then I just have to say here this dot furthest level equals furthest level. This dot best time equals best time. And this dot player name equals player name. And so all that this is really doing here is saying that whatever I've passed in in this furthest level parameter is going to be stored in this particular instance of the furthest level variable up here. Had we not named these the exact same thing, if I had just named this like fl, then I could have gotten rid of this and said furthest level equals fl. But for the sake of clarity, like if I am typing this in and I'm in a different class and I want to see kind of the prompts that tell me what I'm looking for, you generally want to keep these to be um, descriptive names. The last thing we need to do in here is we need to make sure that this is serializable. Uh, by default, things aren't serializable, which means they can't be kind of saved into a binary file format. Um, so we just need to tag this with an attribute up here, which is system.serializable. And that lets Unity know that this class is able to be um, able to be saved in this way. Incidentally, this also makes this visible if we were to have, say, a public save data variable in one of our classes, in one of our mono behavior classes, it would actually appear now. Um, inside of the inspector. That's the other thing that serializable does for you there. So with that in place, now what we can do is all we have to do in here is change these integers that we were saving into these save data files that are these save data classes that we've created. Because um, really, like I say, everything is ultimately an object. And so we can interchange an integer with a save data class. They're both objects. They can both, and then those, as long as they're both serializable, they can both be made into these files. So up here, all we have to do is change this from int for this level to something like save data data. And then we just have to change the reference to the parameter down here as well. And now this method will take in that save data information and convert it to a file for us. Likewise, in load game data, instead of returning an integer, we'll actually return an instance of a save data. And we simply have to change this here to save data data and we need to cast this to a save data. We might have a little bit of a gotcha here and we'll check that in one second um, because sometimes depending on how you create this class you may need to cast this this way or you may need to cast it literally saying as save data but we'll see if that becomes an issue in just a second and then we can simply return data here. Now here's a kind of a special case, because here we don't have, if we haven't ever saved anything, that we don't have a save data class or an instance to, to return. So we could just return null and then have some system where whenever something's loading it, it's like, oh, this is just a null setup. Or we could just return a kind of default in the same way that we're returning zero, which was the default integer. We can kind of create a baseline um, save data for our game to work with. I think that's what we're gonna do here. And that's easy enough to do because we've created this constructor down here, what we can do is simply say return a new save data. And the information we want in here, we want the furthest level to be zero, like it was with the integer. Uh, best time, we'll just call zero f. And player name, we'll just say new player. And so we would obviously want to give um, our player places that they can adjust these things. But by default, that's what it will start as. So with all that in place, now we just need to go back to our play session manager again. But before I do that, I do want to double check on this cast and make sure it's working properly. So we're going to jump to the inspector. See if, yep, here we go. Um, oh, nope, this is a different one, actually. This is cannot implicitly convert 
save data to an integer, meaning I forgot to change, oh, these are the ones that we haven't up updated yet inside of Play Session Manager, so that one's okay. Let me double check with the other two. Yep, everything's in Play Session Manager. So what that's telling me is that this is a valid way to cast um, the file object to a save data type. Um, had we done as save data, it might have thrown an error to us, So, uh, but right now we know that this is a safe way of doing that. So now we're gonna, we're gonna jump over to Play Session Manager, and in here now we can no longer simply um, pass this load game data because this is, this is asking for an integer and this is giving us this entire um, save data class. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up in here, along with our integer for our current level and our furthest level, I'm gonna create a save data variable called data. And this is where we're going to store that data while we're playing our game. So it's sort of like we've loaded up the file, we're kind of storing it in memory while we play, and then once, we've, once we're done, we can update it and restore it back into the file again. So what we'll do is instead of calling on furthest level here, we'll say data equals save manager load game data. So at this point here now, we're, we're taking this data and we're uh, taking the data from our computer's memory and we're storing it inside of this variable. And we can also here say now furthest level equals data dot furthest level. And this is a little bit of a duplication now because really we're just storing in, in, this, um, in this variable, we're storing kind of the same thing as what's being stored in the furthest level variable here. It, in the interest of not changing that over too much right now, we're not going to change that. We're not gonna like eliminate this and kind of convert it right now, but that is another optimization we could do in the future. Um, likewise, so this is all set now. We just had to get the data and then pass in that specific piece of data to that specific variable. Likewise, down in our handle level end where we actually save this information, what we need to do here now is say, in addition to setting our furthest level to the current level, we need to set data dot furthest level equal to the furthest level. So now data is updated. This data, save data class is updated, and now we can pass that back to the save manager to create the file for us. So we'll simply pass in here as the parameter now, data. Save that there. And what we've basically done here, we're not actually gonna see any real difference in um, what we've created. Like if we go back to, uh, if we go back here to Unity, uh, we should hopefully see our errors go away but nothing's really going to change in the stuff that we do here. Um, in fact, the one thing I do need to make sure that I do is delete this um, old saved game because that now is gonna to try to load that and read it as a save data and that would give us an error. So we'll just make sure we delete that. And now everything should play the exact same way as we had before. In fact, if I play, start the game, if I walk over here, turn to menu, and escape, we can refresh this. We do, see, we do still see the same idea, same, a saved game data, but now this is actually storing for us the integer, the float, and the string, and whatever other information, additional ints, additional strings, arrays, lists, whatever information is pertinent to our game. So with that, uh, we've really got a lot of our systems built up for this game. Uh, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Despite centuries of historical records, we still have no idea what the cubes are or where they came from. They would only react to certain people under certain conditions. Only one thing is known for certain. Those that work with the cubes for too long end up vanishing.